Hi, it's Dwyer. It's October 16th, 2024. Gamblersadvisory.com, a free site. Bettingangle.us, a free site. Remember, the opinion you should follow should be your own. Just consider this video to be a second opinion from a complete stranger online. Let's talk about the NFL. I've already posted my uh, point spread picks for the week. Let's talk about futures. I'm going to wave the white flag here. Kansas City plus 500. I don't believe they're the best team in the league. Uh, I believe that's San Francisco. They actually have a head-to-head -head game against San Francisco, which is not operating at full strength. Uh, this week, that's really the game of the week, folks. But Kansas City has an interesting blueprint. Um, they started it last year before they were an offensively gifted team. Now they're a defensively gifted team in football's most defensively blessed division, right? Just understand that the Denver Broncos and the Chargers are both defensive football teams. So because Kansas City has the jump, because Kansas City has the experience, because Kansas City is going for the three-peat, uh, I'm going to enter the water here. KC plus 500 to win the Super Bowl. I don't expect them to. This is really a play that I'm hoping to be able to hedge uh, come playoff time. But I do believe Kansas City makes the playoffs. I just don't believe a rookie quarterback, Bo Nix, is going to be able to challenge the Chiefs, who have a stranglehold on winning that division. Right? Nor do I believe that Jim Harbaugh, who was having heart palpitations this last weekend, uh, has a team that can compete with the Chiefs. Um, the Raiders just aren't ready. So the Chiefs are going to end up in the playoffs, and with this defense and with this level of experience, uh, they're going to make some noise. I don't believe I'm going to be able to do much better than a plus 500, even if they lose to San Francisco this week. Another team that interests me, and futures is the kind of thing you play during the year because some teams will prove themselves, some things will break right for certain teams, while other teams will disappoint. Right? Let me point out among the disappointing teams so far are the New York Jets, who just lost at home to the Buffalo Bills. I want people to look closely at the Bills. Right? Because the Bills also beat the Miami Dolphins, who we thought were going to be one of their key competitors in Miami. So the Bills are sitting on a two-game lead in the division, and they've already beaten their two chief nemesis on the road. So the Bills are just perfectly positioned. Uh, you're getting them at 10 to 1 right now to win everything, right? I understand they have a problem getting by KC in the playoffs. But let's concede that they're going to get to the playoffs, right? They have three different games where they had at least 23 first downs this year. Their next game, they're 4-2 and two right now. Their next game is at home against Tennessee. I think that's a win for them. Then they travel across country to play Seattle. That's going to be a tough game. Geno's playing excellent ball. But then they come back home to play the Miami Dolphins. I believe that's a win. Right? Tua is out, folks. That's a win. They've already beaten the Dolphins. Right? So understand, if they go 2-1 and one, uh, over the next three weeks, they're going to be 6-3. and three. Then, of course, they get to the tougher part of their schedule. They have to go play Indy on the road. That'll be a challenging match, but they should win that. Then they play KC, but understand, they play KC at home. Then they have a bye week, and it's off of the bye that they then play San Francisco at home. Understand the advantage they're going to have week 13. 
They will have been at home week 11 to face the Chiefs, right? They will have slept in their own beds, been in their own neighborhoods week 11. Then they have a bye week. Then they're still at home on the 13th to face the 49ers, right? So they will have been at home the prior two weeks before they hit that third week game against the Niners. So even though I consider the Niners to be the best team in the league even now, and I'm sorry, Minnesota, but even now, just understand the Bills have strategic games at home that should help them pad their records. Let me also point out, too, that two of the last three games the Bills play this year are against the New England Patriots, a team that right now has gone to their rookie quarterback and is having all sorts of offensive problems. So you're getting the bills here, and I've long maintained that futures offer more value than betting week to week, right? Because your team doesn't have to win it all. Your team just has to be in a position to make the playoffs so you can hedge knowing that you got leverage on the team. So believe it or not, the Buffalo Bills right now are 10 to 1 to win it all. Folks, they're much better positioned to do so than teams like the Detroit Lions, right? Who's dealing with Minnesota in their division? San Francisco, where it seems they have a revolving door at the hospital, right? You know, guys are hurt. Um, they've had problems. Right? right now, the Buffalo Bills, who might not be as good as Detroit, might not be as good as San Francisco, but they're better off than both of those teams in terms of having a two-game lead in their division and having beaten their chief competition, right, the Dolphins and the Jets, on the road. So keep an eye on futures, uh, just food for thought. Let me also say, too, I know many people are excited about Tampa Bay. Just understand Tampa has a very tough stretch of their schedule coming up. Uh, Tampa right now is going off at 40 to 1. I still think they're a very good play because that offense is blessed. And because after their upcoming tough stretch, they actually have an easy go of it playing teams like Carolina. Right. Let me also point out, too, you have a huge moment, and it's big, in Pittsburgh. Right. Um, the offense has not delivered. I don't care how good Justin Fields looks in highlights. The bottom line is a change is needed in Pittsburgh. Right. Pittsburgh has had a problem getting a lot of first downs. Um, has not reached 300 passing yards in any game yet this season. Uh, to put it in perspective, Pittsburgh's last two weeks against the Cowboys and the Raiders, in other words, hardly frontline teams this year, right? The way they're playing, Pittsburgh did not reach 19 first downs in either game. So the question here is, can they beat the Jets at home with Russell Wilson? Right now, that's a big question because just understand, you're getting the Pittsburgh Steelers right now. and They're off to a great start this year at 45 to 1. Right. So uh, let's just say if they can beat the Jets and get to 5 and 2, folks, week 8 is against the Giants. Week 9 is a bye week. Week 10 is on the road against the Washington Commanders, who are off to a great start, but who still have a rookie quarterback. He does look like a pro bowler. I have a ticket on him for offensive rookie of the year. But the Commanders do have a rookie quarterback, and they have a defense that's below average. If the Steelers can win their next three games, you'll find yourself in Week 11 with the Steelers at 7-2, and two. right, folks? If you're betting futures and if you were able to get a 45-1 to one on a team like that, and by the way, 
You can get that now. You'd be in the catbird seat. Right by contrast, if they lose to the Jets, if Russell has problems, if the offense, which has been under 21st downs in four of the six games this year, can't move the ball, then you could have problems. Right, let me point out week 11, the Steelers then are at home against a divisional foe they know, but a tough foe in the Baltimore Ravens. Then they're on the road against Cleveland. I still believe Cleveland's a better team than they've been playing. They're on the road against Cleveland, and then they follow that up on the road against Cincinnati, which is defensively challenged. So take a hard look at the Steelers at 45 to 1. Understand, though, you're dealing with the uncertainty of an offense that's been anemic that's changing quarterbacks midstream. Anyway, those are my futures thoughts for this week. We'll revisit futures on a weekly basis. Just understand that there is value out there even now. After a fast start, you can get the Chiefs at a plus 500. Now, you can get the Buffalo Bills at 10 to 1. And now you can get the Steelers at 45 to 1. Food for thought. To put that in perspective, believe it or not, the Bears, who are overpriced, <laughs> you're getting the Bears at the same odds, 45 to 1. And there you're dealing with a rookie quarterback and uneven offensive performance. Those are my thoughts. Let me hear yours in the comment section of this YouTube video. Thanks for stopping by.